Planet Vero Studio is powered by the Nolan Group of EXP Realty. MyNextHomeFinder.com Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm David Yuck here. And I'm Susan Keller Horn. And you're listening to Yuck About Today, where every day is a movie day. So lean back, you can watch, or you can get up, put your headphones on, go for a run, and listen to what we yak about today. And, of course, we're yakking about the Vero Beach Film Festival again. And it's incredible filmmakers. That's who we're sharing with you today. But first, we want to tell you, go to vbfilmfest.org and look at the passes that we have available. We have passes available that are four pass, where you just go and see any four films during the festival. We have a pass that allows you to see all the films and attend the opening and closing events. And then we have the premiere pass. That pass gives you access to everything. And we're going to have filmmakers all over town, and we're going to have a ton of fun. So please go to VB filmfest.org and get your passes now. And you know what I wanted to do, Susan? I wanted to introduce the opening of this show to people who don't know it. So let's play it. fun yakabat today and uh we're bringing you two fabulous filmmakers our first filmmaker is lynn marvin dingfelder and we want to say hello lynn how are you hi fine thanks for having me on quite the <laughs> honor well, your film, Saving Paradise, Artists with a Cause, was one of the films we had selected for the 2020 film festival that wasn't. And so I'm so excited to have you back again. Um, tell us a little bit about the film. Well, it, uh, it was kind of an accidental find, if you will. Uh, a friend I met at a party told me about uh, women who painted houses. Uh, and she said, you have to do a documentary on them. And I figured, you know, What's what's neat about that? I visualized, you know, women in overalls with roller brushes and <laughs> things. But but it turns out that when I met them, um, they they really are activists. They're not just artists. And uh, I fell in love with them. Uh, three very special women uh, ranging in age from 40 to 80. And uh, their whole cause was to save their local beach community. And what I mean by that are the cottages that were being torn down like we see everywhere in the state uh, for high rises and, and big box houses. And uh, they wanted to somehow preserve uh, the, the uh, delicate and love, lovely nature of the, the beach house, the beach cottage. And, uh, and so they did that through painting them because they were afraid that once they were destroyed, people would forget what they looked like. And that started a whole movement. So finding out about their story and what they had done. And by the, when I met them, they had been doing this for about, oh, oh 15 years or so. Now it's certainly much longer and, and a very successful movement. Where is this community? I'm sorry. It's an Indian Rock speech. And where is that? On our side of the coast. <laughs> <laughs> That's in Pinellas um, County in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So it's on the west coast of Florida. So it, it yes. from what I saw in this film, it seems like a community that is somewhat similar to Vero Beach. And I'm so excited that we're bringing it here. Um, how, you know, they originally started out that they just wanted to preserve the cottages by by just painting. How did it evolve into actually preserving the physical cottages? I think it was the awareness of their portraits. You know, they, they're plein air artists. And what that means is that they are out on the street and they're actually painting and they'll be there for hours. And there are three of them. They do uh, very unique things called triptychs, which are each artist takes an angle of the same 
scenario. And then when they put it together, it's a beautiful piece of three people's art. Um, but they also do individual pieces. But anyhow, they stand on the street and they paint the houses. So it's kind of an awareness. People see them and they're all dressed up in their, their hats and their flowing gowns and they, do, you know, long skirts. And uh, they, they just look very special and unique and maybe even a little old school. And so it's a conversation piece. The tourists come over and talk to them. Locals got to know them. And everyone asks, what are you doing? Well, we're we're painting this cottage because it might not be here much longer. That started kind of a swirl of activism at City Hall and people started, locals started complaining. And the next thing you know, this, this art actually became um, a unique form of activism by inspiring people to save this beauty, preserve it. And they have. Are the um, paintings ultimately for sale and they raise oh, money yeah. for a specific cause? Can you tell us more about that? So um, the paintings are for sale. In fact, they uh, do a calendar every year that's very popular that has uh, an assortment of, of all their, their artwork and they sell that. And my understanding is that out of this awareness became um, an actual uh, not-for-profit and they created um, the Historic Preservation Committee and they actually now have historic preservation awards that they give out to the community for people who have done something to preserve something unique about their beach cottage. And they have big dinners and big fundraisers. And, and I think initially it started to stop the developers and to stop, you know, th these homes from being knocked down. Um, and, and now there's this whole awareness movement because it really is old Florida. It might even be a little older and funkier than, than where you are in Vero Beach. Mm. It's, uh, it really feels like you're back in the 50s when you go there. You know, I went to the University of Tampa in Hillsborough County, Yay. and Pinellas County was, you know, right there. And I can't remember for sure, but I have a feeling I passed through that town. And it would have been oh, so sure many years ago that I may have actually seen, and maybe because I was a student, did not appreciate, but I remember mm -hmm. all the old towns up and down the coast. And what I found so interesting is up and down the East Coast, where we are, people still talk about what Miami looked like and what the beach looked like. And maybe they say some it. of it with redoing South Beach, which became terribly chic. Um, but most of it was lost a along, the, uh, a along the ocean. And what was so great about watching um, y your film is not only did you see and feel the community that once was, but I was also looking at the community today, and it seems like a relatively small community still. What's the mm -hmm. population? Mm, I'm sorry, I don't know that offhand. I'll find out. But it is <laughs> tiny. Um, and I can tell you that uh, they have been very successful in terms of uh, making this uh, a special thing that people want to come to, bringing people back to these cottages. In fact, you mentioned uh, the, the Tampa side. Uh, many people from Tampa would go on vacation there or have, you know, their their two-week break That's right. in uh, Indian Rocks. It was very, very common over the years. That was the go-to place here in Tampa. So it was very easy getting interviews of people who over, you know, several generations had gone to Indian Rocks and remembered what it was like and extremely affordable back then, you know. But uh, they've done a wonderful job, not in not just preserving the homes, but in creating this awareness, so much so that now they actually uh, have a little walking tour, a, a historic walking tour, where you can actually see the, the different cottages and uh, they have they have a map that they've created and they have a historical society, which is wonderful. And uh, it's a small but very lovely community and, and people are very involved and they love their little homes. Well, thank you so much. Um, we are so excited to share the film with our audience finally. It's been a few years. Uh, and maybe we'll actually go I think it's only a four-hour ride <laughs> to go across. Uh, I, I think we would love to have you here. <laughs> well, we would love we'll to trade. have you here. We'll go there. You come here.
<laughs> thank well, thank you. you for the honor of uh, showing our film at the at the film festival. We no. look forward to seeing you then. We'll yeah. see you then. Our thank pleasure. you. We look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Anyway, Bye. before we go to uh, break, I uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, New Vision Eye Center does sponsor this show and makes it possible for you to now see us. It used to be just hear us, but now you can see us because, like I always say, I wouldn't trust my eyes to anyone else. Dr. Stephen Tate offers the safest and most efficient technique for customized cataract surgery. Patients are personally counseled on the best approach for their needs and lifestyle. From multifocal lenses that allow for distance and reading vision to toric lenses that correct astigmatism, let New Vision Eye Center guide you safely through your options. For world-class eye care on the Treasure Coast, visit newvisioneyecenter.com. At Sunshine Furniture, our 35,000-square-foot showroom is filled with the largest selection of in-stock coastal furniture on the Treasure Coast. Dining and bedroom sets, occasional tables, sofas, sleeper sofas, love seats, and chairs, including lots of slipcover styles from Universal Upholstery, Four Seasons, and Cabri. At Sunshine Furniture, we have a gallery of Tommy Bahama and Lexington designed for a relaxed approach to the finer things in life. Right now, we have selected groups marked down for our spring clearance, and also all pictures, lamps, and accessories are half price. Sunshine Furniture, 1295 US 1 in Vero Beach, next to Planet Fitness. Visit our website at sunshinefurnituresurecasual.com and visit our outlet and closeout store directly across the street. Sunshine Furniture, the best in every way. Sunshine Sunshine Furniture. Time to take on those spring projects. Sturgis has lumber, hardware, and paint supplies. And for convenience, no one beats Sturgis. Just a stone's throw from Grand Harbor and Waterway Village at 4645 US 1 Vero. Sturgis Lumber and Hardware. More than just lumber. Got hungry kids? Great, because kids eat free every Tuesday at the Grill at C.W. Willis Family Farms. Enjoy American favorites out on the spacious patio. C.W. Willis, what you gonna grill us? On Oslo Road in Vero Beach, online at C.W. Willis Family Farms. Hey, welcome back. I'm David Yak here, here with Susan Keller Horn, and you're listening and watching Yak About Today. So, for um, a little chat about the film festival, I know we're pushing the film festival, it's what we have to do, but I also want to tell you that besides buying tickets on vbfilmfest.org, which you should do today, um, We can always use volunteers. If you're in the surrounding area of Indian River County, um, you know, it takes a lot of people and a lot of help to put on a film festival. So we always welcome uh, new volunteers. And I think there's a sign up on uh, on one of the pages. If you go to vpfilmfest.org and go to the menu, I think you'll find uh, a section for volunteers. And of course, to all the businesses out there that are actually listening or watching us, It would be great if you thought about sponsoring the festival, because that's what makes it possible for uh, us to put on all these great films. Um, Anyway, Susan, (laughs) I want to introduce somebody, Vince Williams, director of Prepare for Launch. And this is an exciting sort of astronaut film. And welcome, Vince. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Vince. (laughs) The story. This is something that I'll bet you anything. Nobody knew this story. Um, so tell us about it. Yeah, you're exactly right. I've dealt with with this film. I've dealt with so many NASA experts, and they don't know this man's story, which I think is really what makes it the most unique. And and it is a story that really, I mean, you guys have seen the film that really should be told because he was a part of the Apollo 19 graduating class um, of NASA. And he uh, was very involved in the entire process of- He being uh, getting, John Bull, right? <laughs> he being John Bull, yeah, and, uh, yeah. He being John Bull and getting, you know, and getting, um, and getting men on the moon. And which is, you know, these men are such heroes. They're, they're really the modern day superheroes. They're real life. Um, heroes and their inte- their intelligence is incredible. Their physical 
abilities are incredible and then what they had to go through with the space race to get that accomplishment uh for the united states was you know you know in history i mean it just just an incredible accomplishment in history so the film really looks at that aspect of it and how they had to go through all of these things and the nasa training gauntlet as, as we call it to get you know to that accomplishment and it's john bull's experience and and his family's experience uh the reason that he is so not known or not recognized is uh because i think that uh like all of us i think this is how the story relates to all of us he had downfalls in life and and you know how did he come out of that in the end and i think that's that's where the story was kind of birthed from it's kind of birthed from the pandemic in a way which it's 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 people that are we're all experiencing this you know what are we going to what are the next steps this is very you know this is a very hard time for everyone and you know eventually we're all going to come out of it and and be a success and i think and i think it coupled with nasa and coupled with that that's where this story was birthed from and i think it really makes john bull relatable to everybody it really makes an astronaut relatable to everybody because again they are just this superhuman thing is like i don't relate with an astronaut as a filmmaker i was like i don't relate with an astronaut i don't know um but when i found his story i i personally as a director and a writer i really related with his story on a on a lot of levels you know, what I thought was very interesting about his story was how much he had to give up of his own family and his own family life in order to make mm -hmm. all his accomplishments. And then his whole world changed. Mm -hmm. That's so mm -hmm. integral to your story. Um, I love that. How did you come up with that? Like, did you know that about him or where did you find that? There isn't much known about him, to be honest with you. There isn't much written. There's a little bit here and there. Uh, uh, you know, there there's some there's some biographies that address his uh, address his family. So uh, there there is there's a few chapters in some books that say, uh, you know, it's, it's just basically research um, and say like what this time was like for him. And I think that ultimately with his family, and and this is a, it, and there's a lot of NASA films that are made, but ultimately with his family, the families are on this journey too. And I think. Whenever you have anything that happens to a family member, the entire family is going through it. So the wife, the son, and what are their reactions to it? And how did they support this person in their time of need? And so I think, again, it's all kind of just universal truths that are applied to this fantastical NASA story that hasn't been told yet. Are there any, uh, is the son still around? <clears throat> There, uh, there are, there are a couple children. I have talked to a couple of the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, uh, on a different subject, how did you, you're 23 years old, which shocked me when I saw this film because I did not expect such an incredible film from a 23 year old, but how did you score getting Jacob Young as your lead? He's an Emmy winning actor. Yeah, he's, I will say Jacob Young was such an incredible an incredible talent to work with. He's been in the industry forever, uh, mainly from mainly from soap operas, but he's done The Walking Dead recently. And he's he's such an incredible actor and leader. Uh, we were actually just kind of, we had this idea and we pulled up an actual picture of John Bull on the computer and another filmmaker was kind of walking past and they saw a picture of him. And, we, and I think we were just saying, uh, you know, we need somebody that looks like this guy, like, because this is a biopic. And, uh, she was like, Melissa Howard, and she, she was like, well, I, I have Jacob Young on speed. I was like, what, what in the world? And so I was talking to him that night and he was a fan of, he was a fan of NASA. He was all gung ho about it. He was just like, I'll do whatever it takes to be in this film. I think it's an incredible story. And uh, he pulled in Amanda Baker, who he who's worked with before, to to be the wife. And then we got McTeer Parker and uh, Ethan Pogue to play the son. Um, and they were all just so amazing to work with from the beginning. They really, they really just were listening to my vision for the project and on board with 
every single little nuance. It's a very, I, I think it's a very nuanced film in terms of the emotions and the cinematography and all of that. We worked so, so hard to get all that um, in line and the actors were just the best thing for me about the whole project to, to work with them. And, and, a, and a pro like Jacob Young, he was such a leader to the rest of the actors. It was just, it was just a great experience with him. You know, Vince, <clears throat> I always ask this question one way or another. So every once in a while we see a, a short and a, a short like this, where you want to learn so much more detail about the characters, their life. Did you ever think of maybe making this into a full length? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, that was, that was a thought. That was a thought I think early, early on. Uh, we didn't really know how we were going to do it. We do have, we do have a feature written for it um, between now and when the, between now, which is kind of the world premiere is going to be the Vero Beach Film Festival, but between the Yay. short film and now we do have a feature film written for it. Uh, Jacob Young has been incredible. He was kind of the one that inspired the, the feature and said, hey, you know what? I've got a lot of connections. I've been doing, doing this for years and I, and I come from the documentary world. So for me, I, <laughs> for me to be, and that's why this, this, bi this biopic is, is relevant to what I do. And, um, but, but, uh, when he was like, yeah, let's do this. I was like, okay. Um, you know, we'll, we'll write a feature. The feature screenplay definitely has, has got some eyes on it too. So yeah, we're hoping. I mean, I think there's so there's so much more that can be told about this story, and it, it like I said, it is so nuanced and detailed that there are a lot more details we can get into um, with this story. But ultimately, I think that the short, you know, the sh the short tells it as well. I think, and, and it tells it in a pretty impactful way. I'm, I'm I'm super happy with how it represents John Bull and who he was, and uh, and and gets his story out there. I think that's the most important thing is that he is somebody that isn't recognized and it brings recognition to, you know, an American hero. And was it difficult to make this on a low budget? Cause that's what you basically told us ahead of time. And then, and you had to recreate NASA and the space capsule. How did that all come about? Yeah, it, this is the reason why I never really approached the film before this, because to say like we need to film in a space capsule and we need to be at NASA is like, how in the world do you do that on a small budget? It was it was the reason why I was like, there's just no way this film could ever get made. Um, but I think when we kind of found John Bull's story, I was just so inspired by it that I just started doing research and I found almost every capsule that we could ever film in. We even contacted people in LA for capsules that had been made previously, but ultimately we found a guy in the Atlanta, Georgia area that actually, again, he was just a NASA enthusiast and he built the command module by spec in his garage wow. um, through 3D printing. So he had the actual life-size command module in his garage and all of the switches, everything, the lights, everything worked on, on this thing. And you could literally just sit in the seats and it was, it was the command module um, to spec. And so he had let someone else film in it. And I was just like, can you, you know, we really, to make the film even happen, we, we need this piece. And he was so willing to do it. And Bill Walker, he was just, amazing to work with he was so intelligent about the lingo and the is this right is this right is this would they have hit this switch um we everything hey, Vince, is Vince. is true true and real Vince. in the film so we have to yeah. cut we have to cut it now we're out of time the radio yeah. station will kill us if we go over <laughs> if we go over no problem no problem we guys. want to thank you we want to hear more of the story and hopefully we'll hear it when we see you yes thank you uh, thanks right, so everybody. much <clears throat> so Remember, vbfilmfest.org, buy your tickets there, join the festival. There are parties, there are dinners, there are great lectures, great panels. It'll be an extraordinary experience. So please, make your way down here, no matter where you're from. And Susan? Thank you. Yes. And don't forget, you can also volunteer for the festival. And it's not just during the festival. We definitely need you during the festival if you're a volunteer. But we also will be marketing the festival at various events. So please go on to vbfilmfest.org and look up our volunteer opportunities, look up our passes. We look forward to seeing you soon.
Thank you.